safe and sound as a storm pounds the northeastern United States, threatening Halloween celebrations this weekend, particularly in New England, where they're already threatened by uh, humans, by people who are trying to take <laughs> Halloween away. You know, I know the country is very divided right now, but I, this, I believe, might be the kind of thing that will unite us. Maybe, maybe not, probably not. But there's a school district in Melrose, Massachusetts, just a few miles north of Boston, that has decided to, quote, de-emphasize Halloween. And not because of COVID, that has nothing to do with COVID. Schools will not host their annual Halloween festivities this year, thanks to a new policy. Superintendent Julie Kuchenberger sent a letter to parents, says, over the past several years, MPS has worked to de-emphasize Halloween, shift our focus toward community building through fall celebrations. As we work to address unfinished learning, two of our key priorities are equity and the inclusion of all students and fostering a sense of belonging and partnership with students, family, and staff. And I guess that means no Halloween party? I don't know why. <laughs> Sounds to me like maybe Julie Kuchenberger couldn't think of a fun costume, so she ruined it for everyone. Parents have started a petition to bring Halloween back to the school, but the district is standing. Pat Kuchenberger said, there are people who don't celebrate Halloween, students, and that means those kids might not come to school at all that day, which, all right, problem solved then, right? I mean, <laughs> then nobody's, I don't know, bring on the Skittles, right? Who is, uh, maybe I'm being obtuse, but who's feeling marginalized by a Halloween party? Goblin Americans? I don't know. I, <laughs> All I know for sure is there are about to be a lot of eggs thrown at the Kuchenberger house. <laughs> Instead of de-emphasizing Halloween, what, maybe what they need is an alternate, non-offensive name for the holiday at the end of October. It could be freely celebrated, schools inclusively, for all. And because we like to be helpful, we came up with some ideas. Uh, National Gourd Appreciation Day. <laughs> Squash Ashana. Children dress slightly differently than they normally do every day. The uh, Festival of Non-Terrifying, Eco-Friendly Rubber Masks. Dracula Labor Day. All Snickers Eve. Afterlife Awareness Day. Just Let the Theater Kids Go Nuts Night. And something we can all get behind, Rob Schneider's birthday. So 58 this year. So happy birthday, Rob. In New York, they're cracking down on what the kids can wear to school. The three elementary schools in New York have banned costumes based on Squid Game, the Netflix show. This is one of the more popular Squid Game co It looks like Daft Punk at the dollar store to me, but... <laughs> the real question is, who's letting their young children watch Squid Game? You shouldn't be able to watch homicidal games of red light, green light when you're still playing regular games of red light, green light. <laughs> There will be no trick-or-treating at the White House this weekend. They're planning to do the traditional handout of candy, but Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema blocked it. They said they were... <laughs> the official reason they're skipping the annual tradition is because the Bidens will be at the G20 in Italy. True, it's... Joe just wants to keep all the Werther's originals for himself. He loves them. <laughs> this would never happen under Trump. Every day under Trump was Halloween. Every day he... he... He woke up in the morning, he put on a full pumpkin face, ate garbage out of a bag, and scared the hell out of everyone. Although I will say, I have to be honest, and I think you'll agree with me on this, Guillermo. You're not listening at all, are you? Uh, no, I am, okay. yeah. All right. <laughs> Truth be told, I miss Trump at times like this Halloween. I was watching him give out the candy. That was one of the few bright spots of his time in office. I mean, remember this? He, uh, the kids, they had the... He put the candy on the kids. And then Melania, she's like, I guess this is what they do here in America. That's also how he fe feeds Eric and Don Jr. It's why their hair is so greasy. <laughs> guess who showed up in costume in Congress yesterday? Senator Kirsten Sinema presided over the Senate yesterday dressed to the 1999s. The clerk will report the nomination. Nomination, the judiciary. Sarala Nagala of Connecticut, the United States District Judge for the District of Connecticut. <laughs> what a rebel. Oh, boy. She really does march to the beat of her own drum, doesn't she? In this case, it's the drummer from Loverboy, but it's a different drum. <laughs> save, it, save it for Sturgis Cinema. You look like you lost your sleeves in a scrapbooking accident. <laughs> and um, FDA advisory panel voted yesterday to recommend the Pfizer COVID vaccine for children aged 5 to 11. It was a unanimous vote, 
Well, one uh, abstention, one doctor did not vote yes. Uh, this doctor, Stephen Yu, who said, <laughs> he said the vaccine is poopy and dumb dumb. But children will probably start getting their shots in the next couple of weeks, which is exciting. I mean, now kids can forget about COVID and worrying about that and go back to spreading every other disease known to man. <laughs> And even though Trump announced we'd rounded the corner more than a year ago, and his Fox friends enthusiastically agreed, uh, actually, he infected his inner circle and vice versa with COVID. Some people, like Tucker Carlson, are still working hard to criticize Joe Biden for the way he's handling this. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see what just happened? That was a crime caught on film. <laughs> My God, he's right. For a minute there, I thought we were watching an episode of Cops. There was a crime. <laughs> Someone stop that maniac before he kills again. And it only got tuckier from there. We're gonna grow the middle class to make sure everyone's included and on the deal. <clears throat> the kinds of investment that will stimulate the economy. <laughs> No one from the CDC arrested Joe Biden that day. No one ever will. The people who make the rules don't have to follow them. Yeah, good one, Tuck. Where are those CDC police when you need them to arrest? <laughs> what a soppy bag of phlegm he is. Can we... I have to... You know they call women Karens? Can we call men, uh, male Karens, Carlsons from now on? <laughs> Trump's former top COVID advisor, Dr. Deborah Birx. You know the lady with the scarves? Well, according to Dr. Birx, uh, Team Trump was slow to react to COVID, and as a result, 130,000 Americans who didn't need to die died, which is like the entire population of Topeka, Kansas, Kansas dead, because Birx told investigators Trump was too distracted by the election to work to stop COVID. <laughs> was that what he got distracted? It's like seeing a dog got too distracted to open a museum. He wasn't gonna be able to <laughs> stop COVID, but they asked her, they said, they asked directly if Trump, uh, if he did everything he could to try to mitigate the spread of the virus and save lives during the pandemic, and Burks responded, no. She just said no, which, uh, I don't know, sounds like somebody might not be getting a terrifying Christmas card this year. <laughs> The Ringling Brothers and Barnum & Bailey Circus, which uh, has been gone for a while, might be coming back with an exciting new twist, and that new twist is no animals. There'll be no animals at the circus anymore, which I don't know how that's even, or without animals, the circus is just a bunch of people eating funnel cake and <laughs> swinging flashlights in a tent, right? It's, and what becomes of those animals, the circus animals, are they released back in the wild to do tricks? Because that would be an awesome and very confusing safari. This is a good one. This is from a uh, game show over in the UK called Tipping Point, and where not one but two contestants combined to give one of the best worst answers in game show history. In his epic poems, Homer often refers to nectar as the drink of the gods and which other substance as their food. I know we like donuts. I think I'll go with donuts, please, Ben. OK. Could have passed this one over to Lindsay. Lindsay? I would have said donuts as well. You'd have got Beer and donuts, <laughs> yeah. Right, it's home well. straight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just read this question again. In his epic poems, Homer often refers oh. to nectar as the drink of the gods and which other substances they're food. We've got the wrong Homer. <laughs> I think Tom <laughs> may have realised he's gone for the wrong Homer. <laughs> I've gone for the wrong Homer. <laughs> and they make fun of us. And by the way, he still got it wrong. The correct answer was Duff Beer, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Have you seen the um, photos of the TikTok woman posing from her father's funeral? Yeah, this is a real post, uh, as far as I know, from an influencer named Jane Rivera, who is from Florida, of course, and um, <laughs> she posted this on Instagram. This is her in front of her dad's open casket. <laughs> the caption says, Butterfly, fly away, RIP, Poppy. You are my best friend, a life well lived. And of course, you know, people went nuts. She had to deactivate her account, which I don't know, to me, that's the most upsetting part about it. The moment all I want to do is start following this woman, her account disappears. <laughs> uh, I guess we all grieve in our own very obnoxious ways.
The way I look at it, if that's the way he raised his kid, this is what he gets. <laughs> Let's have another look at that because he, she's definitely an influencer. She's influencing people to understand that a one-shoulder, double-breasted blazer dress, not a good look. No, and <laughs> who's worse, this girl or the moron she roped into taking those pictures? My guess is either stupid boyfriend or horny priest. One of the two. <laughs> you know, there are, there are so many Silly things happening on social media every day. People are so eager to be seen, and we enjoy having fun with that dynamic. So we went out in the street, we asked people to try some popular TikTok challenges. You know, these viral TikTok challenges. Well, we, these we made up. These aren't really viral TikTok challenges, but they are tonight's <laughs> Halloween-themed edition of Trick Top. Deanna, are you on TikTok? Yes. Have you been watching all the crazy Halloween challenges this year? For sure. How about the silly string selfie one that everyone's doing? Sure. And spray that in your face. All right. The whole can. There you go, keep going. Doing great. <laughs> Hold on, I think that can's messed up. Let me give you a better oh, can. God. Here we go, this one's better, this one's better. Work, work, work. And now you're done with your costume. Okay, think of a ghost. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, make out with the ghost. Okay. <laughs> what ghost is that? Casper. Casper Cop. Casper's a child. Casper's a child? This is a Sriracha Vampire's Challenge. Now, that, fill your mouth up all the way. Oh, my I want to get my blood. This is the Sneakers and Mustard Challenge. Oh, God. Mm -mm. Oh my God, Trey, I feel terrible. I screwed up. It's not mustard, it's tartar sauce. All right, this is the Snickers and tartar sauce challenge. Oh. You want better. I'm sure you saw that all those popular sexy costumes have been canceled this year. Yes. They're not woke. So now we have some unsexy costumes we'd like you to try. Okay. This is the unsexy maid challenge. Even less sexy. I'm still getting sexy, Mark. Of course, the big popular costume this year is Squid Game. Absolutely. But because of supply chain problems, you can't get the Squid Game okay. costumes. Okay. So we stopped by the fish market and picked up some real uh -oh. squids. Okay, it's time to play the Squid Game okay. challenge. Wait, grab that. <laughs> What's my worst fear? Well, Halloween's all about facing your fears. This is the Squid Game Challenge. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah! This is the Egg Yourself Challenge. You got 30 seconds. Ready, go. <laughs> hey, top of the head. There we go. <laughs> And that's time. Happy Halloween. Bonus egg for TikTok. <laughs> this is the candy corn on the cob challenge. <laughs> so go one. ahead, grab both ends of that and have at it. Hold on, hold on, little salt, little salt. Good. There we oh go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. Click below to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or if you want to be that way about it, don't.